Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. This is my 2020 M340i and we're gonna be doing a technical analysis of it today. At the request of some of my E90 viewers, I'm gonna be showing you this car a little more in depth. We're gonna look at the suspension, brakes, engine, a quick look underneath, the rear differential, etc. So you can kind of see what these cars are made of. You know, for the record, I've only hand washed this car since I got it, since new in October of 2019. It is now July of 2020, and it really makes a difference. No swirls. Just hand wash your car if you can. To start with, these M340i's get an exclusive grill. They call it cerium gray, and it has a different pattern to it. If you look behind the grill, you'll see that there's active shutters that are closed. They open when you put on your max AC, or if you're driving the car hard and it gets hot, but for the most part, they're closed. If you look down there, you can see this car is equipped with driver's assistance professional, the self-driving, and that's the radar sensor. In the corners here, you have active aero that is vented from in here. Let's start with under the hood. If you want a six cylinder in your three series, it's gonna have to be an M Performance model now. And they put that badging on the engine cover and a full carbon fiber look to it. Let's remove the engine cover itself. The back side of the engine cover has a bunch of sound deadening. So this is a bit more of a rat's nest in terms of how the engine looks under the cover compared to an N54, in my opinion. There's a whole lot going on here. Um, you can see the primary and secondary O2 sensors. You can see the high pressure fuel pump. You can see the coil unplug, and these are really beefy coils now. But they are made by Eldor, as you can see. There is a look at the turbocharger. You can see the wastegate adjustment arm. It's electronically controlled. You can see the primary O2 sensor. And then if you look down in there, you can see the secondary O2 sensor. So you have lots of space here between the engine for cooling purposes. I'm trying to zoom in on the motor mount down there, but it looks pretty robust. And that looks to be a decent sized turbocharger. There's a look at the intake air box with a pretty decent sized resonator on it. If you look down in there, there's a lithium battery that's used when you're flash programming and to run all the accessories. And there's also an AGM battery in the trunk. This car runs Valvetronic now, which came after the N55. When they updated this engine, they used the opportunity to meet new emission standards, hence all this extra stuff you're seeing. But at the same time, they increased horsepower. These cars now run water to air intercoolers and the intercooler is built into the intake manifold itself. So you have some pretty good space in front of the engine now. So if you had to work on it, you can actually stick your hands down in there. In my recent review video, I talked about the fact that this engine is quite different than the engine that comes in the F30 from 2016 and newer. And the potential is a lot higher on these supposedly. And that's due to the fact that they did some technical updates. So this engine is the B58 TU1 or technical update. And they updated it when they brought out the G20 and it differs in a number of aspects compared to the F30 340i. And I know some of you guys are interested in hearing the differences, so I'll go over them here. So there's two versions of this motor now. You have the ML or you have the OL. ML is the middle output and the OL is the high output. That's what came in this car because it's an M performance. Now for emissions purposes, it doesn't really help the cause, but these have a particulate filter built into the downpipe. It has an upgraded high pressure fuel pump meant to run at 75% higher capacity or 5,000 PSI versus over 5,000 PSI versus 2,900 PSI. So it's like it has a $2,000 high pressure fuel pump upgrade right from the factory. And if you want to run E50 and make 600 plus wheel horsepower, you don't have to upgrade your high pressure system. That's significant, that's a big difference and that makes, that's kind of a game changer alone as to why this is gonna be more mod friendly. It's similar to how the N54 had piezoelectric injectors and you can make huge power on it without upgrading your fuel system up to a point. Similar with this, that high pressure fuel pump is rated for big power straight away. 600 wheel horsepower on a stock fuel pump. And these M Performance models have higher flow injectors to work with that pump. So now when you upgrade your downpipe, you're getting rid of the particulate filter and taking care of that anyway. So for lower friction and for supposed improved reliability, they went from a double rail timing chain to a single rail timing chain, which is more beefy. You get rid of the base wheel when you do that and that leads to lower friction and more efficiency. So I'm just changing angles here to keep things somewhat interesting. 
but they've changed the cooling system on this. The block has a different design where it has split cooling. So they want the cylinder temperatures to be higher in the block, but they want the cylinder head temperatures to be lower in the head. So you have a split cooling system to allow for cooler temperatures in the head and higher temperatures in the block for more efficiency and a cleaner burn. It's all part of emissions, but supposedly doing the split actually leads to more power potential. And just to put it out there, this engine is very different to the engine that comes in the 2020 Supra. The 2020 Supra has the engine from the X5, which is designed for torque, but it can be somewhat restrictive uh, if you're trying to make big, big power. And that's why they got this motor in 2021. Just thought I'd throw it out there. On the bottom end, they reinforced the crankshaft even more. They redesigned the crankcase to make it thicker and also stronger, but lighter. And it saved about four pounds, but overall it was just for a stronger crankcase. So the exhaust manifold is now built into the cylinder head itself. That helps with the emissions, but supposedly could aid in spooling as well. Instead of you having individual ports for each cylinder, they all merge into one collector built into the casting of the actual head. That's different on the G20 B58 versus the F30 B58. So it's, it was common for BMW to offer technical updates on their engines, uh, but they didn't do it on the N54. They just ran it from 2007 to 2010 for the most part in mass production. And then they already planned on going to the N55 for, I guess, savings. But it's common for them to do the technical updates. And this technical update on the B58 is considered quite significant. Now you're talking about a different block. You're talking about a different head design. You're talking about different fuel system, different crankshaft, or, which is stronger and lighter. So it's significant. Not to say you can't make big power on the F30 B58, but if you wanted an N54 replacement that's sh supposedly more reliable, that's kind of why I went for this car. So if you guys were wondering, should you hold out for the G20 and wait for them to depreciate, or should you pick up an F30 340i? The, the differences are significant on this car. And in my opinion, the big difference is the fueling system, having more capability. And, you know, maybe the, the lighter bottom end and the reinforcements will be good for crazy power. I don't think it'll make a big difference to most of you guys, but the fueling system is the big takeaway for me. That makes the biggest difference in how much power you can push on these without spending a ton of money. It's a decent sized engine bay. It looks like it'll be somewhat friendly to work on. The, the valve cover gasket should be easy. You're not removing a bunch of cowling to get access to the engine like you had to do on the N54. You got that nice cutaway. If you take this cover off, you have clear access to the cooling system. It's hard to see from up top, but the radiator looks to be somewhat beefy. We'll try to get a look from underneath as well. I'm gonna jack the car up and remove the wheels so we can look at the suspension. I picked up this jack pad adapter for relatively cheap. I'm gonna put a link in the description. If you guys are interested, I'm gonna use it to not screw up my jack points. All right, so here's a look at the brakes. I believe the rotors are 13.7 inch and these should be four piston calipers, but they're proper M Sport brakes. Here's a look at the caliper itself. And these brakes are really phenomenal on this car with a caliper like that, it shouldn't be surprising. Here's a look at the spring and shock assembly. Looks to have some type of anti-vibration damper on there. Some pretty unique looking end links. The thrust arm is pretty aggressive. Everything is aluminum. The tie rod end, the lower control arm, etc. The knuckle, all aluminum. Here's a look at the inside of the rotor. So it resembles the E90 in design. This is a little more robust, probably due to the added weight. The entire underbody is completely covered for proper aero. Looks like they've incorporated the carpeted wheel liners for noise reduction. Now we'll take a look at the rear. And FYI, this car has optional 19 inch rims that come with 18 standard. And this car is rear wheel drive, which is a US only option. So I raised the car up just from the rear and what surprised me is how the front lifted up about equally, so it's extremely stiff stiffer than the E90. There's a look at the rear rotor. Just a single piston caliper in the back. 
The rotor size is nearly identical at 13.6 inches. You can see the suspension geometry back here, it's steel. Here's a look at the coil spring. And that gives you guys a pretty good look. I had some commenters saying that these G20s in North America are built in Mexico, but this one was built in Germany. I believe the M340Is are being built in Germany right now. Not that it matters, the new ones are getting good. Here's the exhaust setup. That's a proper LSD, electronically controlled, heavy duty, beefy LSD. I love that, my favorite part of the car. As you can see, it's got the proper cooling fins and everything. This is as good as an LSD as you'll ever experience in my opinion. It's got electronic control and it's what makes this car somewhat deserving of an M badge if you had to ask me. You can see there's electronic valving in the muffler. There's anti-vibration pieces built into the subframe as well. There is a look at the axles and the diameter of the axles. There is a look all the way up to the front of the car, the exhaust itself. A better look at that differential. And again, this is rear wheel drive only, as I kind of prefer, to be honest with you, even though I may push this for more power, I just, I like a rear wheel drive. And I feel like a lot of Americans feel that way. So I'm kind of glad that this car was offered as rear wheel drive. I just don't understand why they didn't offer it in the rest of the world as a rear wheel drive. So you have a real exhaust tip right on the other side of that, but it doesn't connect, just FYI. So it's not really real, but it's not necessarily fake. There's the M340i badge. Syrian gray as well. I'm sure some of you guys were looking for me to take out all the under trays and show you all around the turbo, etc. What I'm going to do right now is get my GoPro and just shove it along the side of the engine and so you can take a good look at things. But next up, uh, I'm getting a downpipe. So I'll show you in detail once I'm installing my downpipe what the underside of the car looks like. Let's switch over to the GoPro footage now. So just a quick look with that GoPro footage, hopefully that gives you an idea. And like I said, when I put my downpipe on, I'm gonna have all the under trays and everything off and we'll take a better look at all around the turbo to give you guys an idea. But there's plenty of working room. So like I said in my review video, this car is more than just a sport pack with a six cylinder. There's something going on with the end performance tuning and you can really feel it and it makes the car lively and fun to drive. So if this is the first video you're catching on mine, consider subscribing. I do upload regularly. Thanks for watching.